Okay, it is March the 20th, 2020, and I've got to show you this. This is just too good. If you remember last night, uh, showing you uh, what I was talking making a bunch of measurements, putting a benchmark out there for what we're going to compare things against, and uh, then making the adjustments making the modifications and the adjustments and if you remember last night I couldn't get it below uh, about 0.25 percent at 15 watts look at this now let me let me unplug this thing I hate that dog over glare I know I had plenty of that last night and I apologize but now would you call that an improvement 0.05 percent 0.05 percent at uh, where's the power right there 15 and a half watts and look at this I don't have it running now but I'm just so excited about this you ha might have to look back at the other video but do you remember where the um, second third harmonic were last night look at that I mean that that is a significant drop in the third harmonic. Um, the uh, uh, the um, 60 cycle hum is down another 5 dB. It was about minus 75. Now it's down about minus 80. The uh, third harmonic of the uh, line frequency is actually, I still think that's a little high. Okay. <laughs> But look here now. Here, here's something that uh, we were all we've had a number of discussions about, and something that we got to be careful not to get too wound up in. Look at this. You don't see that third harmonic in there anymore, do you? You still see some. You still see the error signal, but it's a um, the, uh, the that uh, Tektronics audio analyzer auto scales it. So it amplifies it up and up and up. So I don't know what all this is. That looks pretty complicated in there. But the third harmonic went away. That three kilohertz stuff just went away for all practical purposes. Now let me show you here. Uh, let's get back around here and then I'll show you what I did. I'll run it again so you can see it right before your eyes. I'll run it a few times here. I just got this done and you'll see that the uh, the tectronics and the HP stuff tell you the same story it starts out at about 0.3 in this case but then as, as you see this thing see there's 0.1 it drops down to the 0.05 level it just it, it significantly improved it. Look at there. Things down at the almost down at the bottom line. It's uh yeah, it's down at 0 0.05. Now can we hear that difference? Probably not. And out there at the 20 kilohertz, it's still that's the two ends, it's about the same, but it sure flattened it out in the middle. So was it worth it? Well, I don't know. Something to do. Let me show you what I did, and then we'll uh, we'll keep this one really short, and I'll post it. Uh, here's what I did. Let's use this schematic right here as, as the model. What I did is um, I wanted to make sure that the signal right here and right here was completely equal so you see how this is a 47k and this is a 47k and they always tell you to make these match pairs well that's a good idea but unless these two sections of the tube are exactly equal these need to be one of them adjustable so what I did is this let's see my I left one of them a 47k. It doesn't matter which one you do. I changed the other one to a 22k and a 50k pot. 
So at about about in the middle, this one would equal 47K. They're going to be very close, but this one may need to be 47. Maybe this one needs to be 48 and a half. Or maybe it needs to be 46 and a half. Who knows? And who cares? And that is in the amplifier, this pot right here. We're only going to do one channel tonight. That's just, uh, I have to turn the lights back on now. That is, uh, be careful here this thing is on that's just pot right up there there's a 22k it had a 47k going over to the power supply so I removed it put in the 22k and ran it back over there that's one I just showed you in the schematic and for the uh, for balancing the uh, cathode currents here's what I did I put a 50 ohm 3 watt wire wound resistor between them and then I, normally they were they were strapped straight together with a piece of wire and this was off the ground but I put this 50 ohm resistor across it and then now I can I can vary one side as much as 50 ohms to the other like if I had it up at the top, I'd have 375 or 350 ohms here, and I'd have 400 here, or the or the reverse. So I've I've got some just a little bit of leeway right in the middle, and it works beautifully. And that is this little part right here. You can see right there. I had to uh, put it on some insulating material and raise it above ground because the uh, the case of the uh, pot is is the wiper so one cathode goes here one cathode goes there and then the case of the pot goes off to the uh, can you see it there the uh, the cathode resistor so the reason I did it that way is, is I just said there's got to be a simpler way they just uh, I was just struggling because I, I just did not want to really have to reproduce this right here with the 100k the 50 ohm the 50 ohm the 50 ohm and the 50 ohm see that they got a 50 ohm uh, problem in there almost but well this is not exactly the one but anyway in in the um, in the UTC design they use a, a fixed resistor then they use a 50 ohm and that's where you set the the overall cathode current and then they got this 50 ohm here where you balance it so it's a but I said, there's got to be a simpler way. And that's when, again, I came up with uh, this one right here. It works. I mean, you can see we reduced it from a quarter of a percent to 0.05%. Okay, well, the last thing I got to do, and I'll do this one tomorrow, is I want to put that little RC circuit in. And I'll have to do some square wave testing with that. This little RC circuit right here. Just about all the amplifiers have it. And while it actually does some damage to the uh, to the high end, if you look back, let me turn the camera back around here. If you, uh, when, when we do this kind of, let me, okay, excuse me, gotta get in front of the camera again, turn this thing off. Darn glare yesterday was pretty bad on, on some of the scenes. What it's gonna do, because I've, uh, I've played with it before, but I, I can't help but believe it has some value. Not exactly sure what, but I'm pretty sure tomorrow when I when I start experimenting with that, we're going to see this right here get a little bit worse out here at 20 kilohertz. I mean, it's only 0.65%. That's okay. I think this is going to get worse, but I'm having some idea that there may be some ringing at high frequencies that it uh, snubs. So we'll see. But anyway, I share this with you guys and ladies because, um, well, we're always interested in doing the best we can. And we want to do it as easy as we can. We don't want to, you know, sometimes we want to do some more than just duplicate somebody else's circuit over and over and over. I mean, this is a Williamson design. Let me set it back down here. I'll show you. It's exactly what you were looking at yesterday with the... Uh, KT 66 is in there. I still think it's kind of a beauty. So, uh, 
there you go I hope all this is a, a value you all stay safe